So we want to talk a little bit about the importance of identifying plants in the pasture. This is a typical horse pasture that we're looking at right now. Um, there's a range of grasses, there's a range of what we might think of weeds, even though some are edible, um, clover. And if you know what's in your pasture, you're going to be a, better able to manage what's in your pasture. And so just for example, when we look down at the pasture, we've got orchard grass is showing up here. Matthew's going to point out how you go about identifying orchard grass. And it's one of the predominant grasses that is desired in horse pastures. So right here we got orchard grass. One of the best identifiers that I use for orchard grass is how light it is at the base of the grass, as well as its shape. You can see it's kind of like very two-sided. Um, the leaves are very smooth and light, and it's just a very, very nice grass to handle compared to some other the yeah. other grasses. Hey, Matthew. Grab some orchard grass, I mean, grab some tall fescue next mm -hmm. and keep the orchard grass in your hand. All right. And so tall fescue is predominant in Kentucky and around, around the southeast, actually. There are about 30 million acres in the southeast, 5 million acres in Kentucky. It's a grass that's very useful for horse pastures, um, but can, can have some issues with toxicity. But Identifying the fescue versus the orchard grass and other grasses is really important, particularly if you're a broodmare farm and you're worried about that toxicity. So Matthew, how are we gonna tell the fescue apart from the orchard grass? All right, well, here on the right side, we have the tall fescue and here on the left, we have orchard grass. So tall fescue is a lot more firm and rough to the touch compared to orchard grass. It's also usually darker and the stalk is round compared to the shape of the orchard grass. Can you hold the stalk back out again? And the roughness of the leaf, just kind of show how they can feel the edge of the leaf, Matthew. So if you try to grab the leaf and pull down, it won't let me pull down because it's rigid, kind of like teeth almost. And the texture is very coarse on the blade itself, like kind of a denim pants-like texture is what we use generally, and it's a lot more dirty compared to orchard grass is one way to describe it, but yeah. So those two are predominant grasses in horse pastures in Kentucky. Almost any horse pasture is going to have tall fescue. In fact, I say horse pasture, cattle pasture the same way. Orchard grass does not survive as long. Fescue is going to kind of be there whatever but orchard grass you're going to have to replant about every four to five years to keep it in a pasture. But most people say, what about bluegrass? I've had people come from Japan and Korea and other places and say, I want to see this bluegrass that I hear about, this bluegrass state. So Matthew, grab us a couple of bluegrass sprigs. So that is an important grass in Kentucky. And the main type of bluegrass is called Kentucky bluegrass. And it's desired in horse pastures but it takes, it takes good management to maintain it in the horse pasture because since it's very desirable and palatable for the animals, they will graze it very close. Is that a good sample? Go ahead and point out a couple of things on that and I'll grab one or two others. This is Kentucky bluegrass. It is very thin and small compared to the other grasses. It doesn't go upwards. It grows more down matted. Uh, it's very thin and the main identifier for it is that the tip of the blade looks more like the end of a boat or a water vessel, and that's true for every stock of it. So, so Kentucky bluegrass, as Matthew just mentioned, is a finer blade. So when you're looking in a pasture and you see really small blades, then predominantly in Kentucky and surrounding states, that's going to be Kentucky bluegrass. And then Matthew gave you those characteristics like the tip of the blade being a boat shape, but much finer blade compared to tall fescue, um, compared to orchard grass as we showed you earlier. In fact, while we're looking at this right now, another important forage is white clover. Matthew, what are you going to tell people to look for if they want to identify white clover? Let me come over here real quick. So white clover is more common clover. It's kind of easy to identify. 
the only trouble would be with red clover, but with white clover, the difference is that the flower is small and white, and there's generally a lot of these around white clover and in the field. So, but it's three leaves and... Unless it's your lucky day and you find a four leaf clover, that would be sometimes found with white clover. Mm -hmm. And white clover, the leaf and the stem is smooth. Yeah. And with red clover, it's, it's pubescent or hairy. So the stem and the leaf are smooth. And I'm not sure if there's even any red clover in this field, uh, partly because under regular grazing or mowing, red clover doesn't survive. The other thing is on most horse farms, they don't want red clover because there's a syndrome called slobbers where the, there can be excessive salivation from eating red clover that, that can have a fungal disease. It's not a toxic problem, um, but it can be an issue. You didn't find a red clover, did you? Nope. Okay. So we'll also mention some of the predominant weeds. So orchard grass, tall fescue, Kentucky bluegrass are the predominant grasses that are growing in the cooler times of the year. Um, today we won't talk about the warm season grasses because that can get a lot more complicated. White clover is the predominant legume. It's making its own nitrogen, so you have free nitrogen in the pasture. But there are several weeds that are present in this field as well. One of the ones that you can probably see sticking up behind us is ragweed. So how would someone pick out ragweed, Matthew? You've got right. one there at your foot. This is a good example of ragweed. It's got a lot of different leafage. I don't know how you would describe that, but... It, it's kind of a serrated type leaf? Yeah, or, mm -hmm. serrated type leaf. It grows in kind of these bushy cluster, clusters, uh, as you can see, and they can get pretty big and pretty wide compared to other weeds in the pasture that I've found. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. they, and they pretty good. we like to keep weeds under control often by mowing, Weeds like ragweed, even once you mow, it does take the top off, but then it kind of just bushes out a little bit thicker. So that can be a way to keep it suppressed, but it's not, it's not gonna kill it. In fact, there's very few weeds that you're actually gonna kill by mowing, you can suppress it. So Matthew, we've got another weed over here, chicory. Oh yeah. That's again, fairly common this time of year in pastures. Um, in fact, a lot of roadsides, you see chicory growing up. This is chicory. It's kind of cut down right here, but here you can see the flower. You'll see a lot of blue flowers along the highway right now from these plants, which looks nice, but they're not really nice because they're a weed. It's very stemmy when it gets to this stage, um, but much of the year you don't have the stems. You just have these leaves. They're a little bit like a dandelion leaf, but most people know a dandelion, you have that yellow flower. Um, chicory is not palatable like dandelion. So dandelion's a weed that, that horses and cattle and goats and sheep all like and it's nutritious. The chicory, not so much. A Couple of other weeds that are just down in this field. One is the broadleaf plantain. How would you look for that, Matthew? Um, plantain's usually an easy one to identify. It has these really thick seed heads right here and plantain will often have seed heads. Mm -hmm. So the broadleaf plantain has very wide and broad leaves, as you can see, so. It's one of the fortunate weeds that is, the name helps you out in identifying it, mm -hmm. because that's in comparison to narrowly plantain, go. which has more narrow leaves. Yeah, I have too much grass in my hands. And both of these weeds are edible for horses and cattle. They don't tend to prefer them, but they're not a, a real problem, but they do take up ground and they don't grow very tall. So in essence, they're taking up ground that you'd rather have more desirable forages like the orchard grass and bluegrass. So when there's a excessive amount of plantain, either broadleaf or narrow leaf, then that, that may require some, some weed control options you'd want to look at. So for today, those are the basic weeds. And we found a number of programs online like Picture This or iNaturalist that are, that are good for identifying from photos. Um, but even just Google Images, if you click on that image, um, it, it, will, it will tell you, just like can identify other things, it will tell you um, at least an idea of what the plants are there.